On today's show, we're going to be talking about this Franken lens that I've built. It's not quite right, but maybe you can help me out. Good morning and welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live three times a week show here at youtube.com slash photo joseph every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9.30 a.m. Pacific, talking photography and video and sometimes live streaming and all kinds of fun photo-ish, camera-ish related topics. Hey, today we're talking about this lens that I've been building. It's a, We're calling it a Franken lens. It's a few different parts here. We're going to obviously take a close look at what this is. And before I get into how it was made, I have to give credit to the guy that I blatantly ripped off in trying to create this. Now, you may remember I was at Out of Chicago conference a few weeks ago, probably a month ago by now. And while I was out there, I met a whole bunch of really awesome people, really awesome photographers. And this one chap's name, Jim Walinski. Did I get that right? Walinski. I was like, yeah, Walinski. Well, Walinski. Sorry, there's an extra N in there. Jim, Jim Walinski. Sorry, Jim, totally screwing that up. Um, has this website. It's Altered Space Photography. And let me just pull this up for you real quick here. Um, check his stuff out. We'll put a link to it down below. AlteredSpacePhoto.com. And he's got some beautiful imagery in here. Um, largely moody, noir stuff. Largely created with his own Frankenstein lens. And I was so fascinated by this lens that he had and the pictures he's creating with it. And uh, he was showing it to me and I actually was able to put it on my camera. So it had, the lens that he had on his Nikon was a, um, a, a Russian Helios lens. And it has a 42, it's a 42 millimeter, it's called M42, an M42 screw mount on it. And I had just happened to have in my bag with me my M42 to micro four thirds adapter. This is one of the cool things about these old Russian lenses, old screw mount lenses, you can adapt them to just about anything. And it, I in fact had the right adapter with me, total coincidence, put it on there, I put his weird lens on my camera and I took a couple of pictures. I posted a couple of photos of him on my Instagram. There's like black and white, he's kind of like ah, doing like a, I don't know what you, anyway, he's making faces. And, um, and I, took a, I posted a picture of the lens itself, of his, his combination of lenses. And it had, in addition to just so happening that I had that M42 to Micro Four Thirds adapter with me, I already had a Helios lens on order. So remember, not that long ago, I did a video on the Lens Baby um, swirly, not the swirl, the um, burn side lens. That's what it's called, the Lens Baby burn side, and it makes this kind of swirly bokeh. Someone in the comments had said that there's a lens that you can buy, an old Russian lens, a Helios lens that has a very similar effect to it. So I went onto eBay and I found one for like 25 bucks. Cool, right? 25 bucks plus $15 shipping out of Belarus and the thing showed up. You might've seen when I posted a picture of the packaging, it was all very mysterious. And that was in fact this Helios lens. So I got the Helios lens and I threw my M42 adapter on it and it works brilliantly, right? Just, it's great. It's really sharp. It's got this great bokeh, really shallow depth of field. It is, it's a long lens though. It's a 58 millimeter lens. So it makes it a really long lens for doing any kind of, obviously landscape or building stuff. It's really a bit too tight for that. Um, but it has a great look to it. And I did post a photo. So I took this with me to Detroit last week, last weekend, and I did post this photo. Let me get this up nice and big here. I did post this photo on Instagram already, a photo that I took while I was walking through the streets of Detroit, came across this guy. He looked awesome. Um, chatted with him a little bit and got his picture. And you can look at the background in there. It's not swirly. We're not getting that swirliness, but it's a really creamy, fun bokeh on there. So that, that's kind of cool. That's the Helios lens. And it's sharp. It was a nice, sharp lens. And, uh, but then going back to Jim, what Jim had added to his was a wide angle adapter. Now, the idea being because the lens is so long, if you want to shoot any kind of, uh, you know, landscape or you want to shoot architecture or anything like that, you're going to need a bit of a wider field of view. And so he had, and I don't, this isn't the same model, but he had just a cheap add-on screw-on wide angle adapter. This is the kind of thing that you would get for well, really for any camera, if you just don't want to invest in a wide angle lens, you get this, it's obviously not as good quality, it distorts a bit, but it'll give you a wilder, wider field of view. You know, why not? So let's take a look at this thing. Oh, I'm going to talk about this too in a moment. Um, but here you can see what this is. This is a cheap 0.35x fisheye lens. It is, what is it, Alturo is the company. Um, we'll, we'll put this, we'll put a link to this down below, of course, um, but there are a bunch of these on Amazon. And we'll come to that adapter in a moment. It comes with a super macro adapter, take this off, which you have to have on. So if I don't put this on, come back to that later. Um, apparently if you don't use this, well, I figured this out pretty quickly. If you don't use the macro lens adapter, it nothing works at all. Uh, but the idea is, okay, breaking this down, you've got the Helios lens. The Helios lens is adapted with this M42 to micro four thirds adapter. And if you're watching this and you're a Canon shooter, Nikon shooter, whatever else, 
you can probably buy one of these adapters. This particular one is from a company called Photodiox. This is the M42 to Micro Four Thirds, and that is, um, it, they're cheap on Amazon as well. Uh, Again, we'll link to these down below. So those two parts go together and that's all that I need. But then I want that wide field of view. So I get this wide angle lens adapter. It has this lens, I don't know what this is supposed to do. It's like a lens shade, thing, just a lens shade thing. I don't understand what that's for. But this just screws onto your lens. Um, however, if I attach this to this lens, I cannot focus at all. Nothing will get into focus. So you need the macro adapter, even though we're not doing macro photography, you need the macro adapter. This much I know for certain. So we put this on. And this comes with it. It comes with the macro adapter. Now, this particular lens, and this might be part of my problem, but this particular lens has a 52-millimeter uh, thread on it, so filter thread, but on the back because it's meant to screw onto a lens. So it's meant to screw into a lens with a 52-millimeter filter. This Helios lens has a 49-millimeter filter. I could not find one of these at 49-millimeter. So I bought the 52 and a 52 to 49 step-down ring. So that's on here as well. So this is a 49 to 52-millimeter filter adapter, just a little step ring filter adapter. That means when I attach this to the lens, it is no longer the, the distance it was designed for. It is now farther away. That could be part of my problem, but I don't think it is. So what is this problem I keep speaking of? So I've got the M42 to Micro Four Thirds adapter. I've got the Helios old Russian lens. I've got the step ring from 42, 49 to 52 millimeter. I've got the macro adapter and then the wide angle adapter. You put all this together and you should, while wide open or maybe stop down just a little bit, get this kind of really creamy, vintagey, slightly distorted look. And if we go back to Jim's photos, this is a great example of it. I hope this picture opens bigger. Um, you can see this picture here. There we go. It's just beautiful. Look at the this like creaminess off of the the highlights on there. It's just incredible. It's just such an incredible image. Which incidentally, go do go to his website. Uh, he's based on the East Coast somewhere, and he does workshops about kind of seeing light in a different way that I find really, really interesting. Honestly, I would like to take his workshop, so I might try and do that sometime because I think it's always great to learn from people whose work you admire. Uh, his stuff is just beautiful, and it's all shot. Well, a lot of the stuff is shot with lenses or a lens like this. Uh, anyway, check his stuff out. So I should be getting this really creamy look to it, and I can get that really creamy look. I get the look. It works. But the problem I've got is I can't hit really far focus. I can't hit infinite focus or even something past, I'm going to guess, maybe 30 feet or so. Uh, 20 to 30 feet past that, I, it's impossible to get it in focus. I cannot get it sharp. If I stop the lens down enough and get a, enough of a depth of field in there, then I can get it sharp, but then I lose the entire look. I, don't, I lose all that creaminess. So here's, here's an example. Let me show you some samples that I did. And this is, I'm like literally sitting at a restaurant playing with this, trying to figure out the focus thing. And I figure out that I can get the look, but only on stuff that's close up. So let's take a quick look at that. Before we do that really real quick, I do want to show, uh, throw this thing up here again. Remember that here at, uh, at uh, youtube.com slash photojoseph on this YouTube channel, we are doing something that we are hoping you're gaining value from. And if you do find that you have gained value from today's show uh, at all, then please do head over to photojoseph.com slash support and check it out. There's a lot of different ways that you can contribute back, put value back. It's a value for value model. If you have gained value, please consider putting value back into this uh, through Patreon, PayPal, or just shopping at the affiliate store. Like if you decide to buy some of the things we're talking about today. Um, also, I have a bunch of training on lynda.com and a few other things in there. So uh, just please do go check that out. That would be that would be most appreciated. Also, while I'm here, I want to remind you that we're going to India next year. There are um, a few seats have sold on this. We are one seat away from the go. So hopefully uh, we're going to get that one more sale and we're going to make this happen. But we are going to India in January of next year, January through, through February, January 30th through February 9th, 2019. All kinds of good info about this at uh, photojoseph.com slash India. And we are going to have an absolute blast. So if you are considering that, let me know. Let's get you on board. Okay. So here's a couple of photos that I took where it works. So this is a close-up photo. There we go. There it is. So there's a close-up photo. When you're getting, I'm getting that creaminess. This is of my delicious glass of tasty sangria. Um, we're getting that creaminess. We've got the sharpness. It's in focus, plus the creaminess around it, which is just fantastic. And then as I start to stop the lens down, uh, so there's, uh, that's probably even wider open. Um, as I start to stop the lens down, we get more and more in focus. You can see I was kind of playing with some of these here. Let me go back a little bit. Um, there, that's probably a good example of more stop down. So I'm getting more of it in focus, but I'm losing the creaminess. So clearly not what I want to do in here. 
So then I start shooting buildings, and this is these first few photos are just me sitting in the same spot at the restaurant outdoor table trying to get this thing to focus. And you'll see like here I cannot focus, right? That's not, it's obviously out of focus there. Um, this is probably stopped all the way down. We don't have any lens metadata on here because, of course, it's no, not electronic. We're not getting the lens metadata through, so I don't see what the aperture was. But this is probably stopped all the way down. So, yeah, it's in focus, but we've lost all the coolness of this lens. And so I keep playing with it and trying different apertures and trying to find something that works. And it just I just can't get it to work at that distance. Um, here's another. This is actually a really good example of this, too. So let me find the right photo for this. Um, let's see here. So here's something like this. This is a great example. So look at the top. This is a, a structure that I'm standing under. It's probably 15 feet tall, let's say. So you can see here, I'm trying to focus on the farthest point away. It's obviously not in focus. The closer subject, the closer part of it is closer to being in focus, still not in focus, but it's closer to being in focus. And then as I stop that down, I guess what I stopped down was before that, um, we start to get more of it in focus, but we're losing that cool creamy, delicious effect for it. So this is the challenge, right? What I want to do is figure out how to get that look out of this lens, the look that I am trying to get. Now, one, and I've been talking to Jim about it, and we're going back and forth and trying to figure out what's different about his setup and my setup. Now, he has said that he doesn't expect to have perfect focus in infinity, but if you look at, again, his picture here, perfect focus or not, this is sharp enough to, to recognize, this is way sharper than what I'm getting, right? This is way sharper than what I'm getting on mine. So he clearly is getting something different than I'm getting. Now, one other thing that he's done, which he hasn't told me why, and I'm, I'm wondering if this is part of the, the trickery that's going on. He has disassembled his Helios lens and reversed the front element. I haven't looked that up yet to see why one would do that, but that is something that he has done. So that might be part of it. But I'm also thinking that it may just be a case of getting this wide angle adapter the right distance away uh, right distance away from the front element or from the sensor, probably the front element of the original Helios lens. I see in the comments here that um, Trevor Pinnock is saying that once you add the macro diopter, you're going to lose infinity focus. You would think, however, Jim has told me that you have to have the macro lens on there. And if I don't put the macro on there, there's nowhere, I can't get anything in focus. I like it just, it doesn't focus at all. So I need that macro diopter on there to get it. And then it's not like I'm in macro in focus. I mean, I can get something that's like, I don't know, 10, 15 feet away, maybe even 20, and that'll get in focus. After that, it doesn't. So it's not just the macro diopter. There's something else. I thought, remember I said I have that adapter, the step ring adapter going from 49 to 52 millimeter. I thought that might be it. But if I take that off and I just hold the filter, the, the wide angle adapter in front of the lens, I still can't get the right focus point. So I need to get very... I put it on a vise or something and move it slowly out and try and find out if there is a position I can put this in. And if I find out that I need to, let's say, distance the wide angle adapter from the lens by another six millimeters or something like that, maybe through a series of step up, step down ring adapters, I can just basically build the thickness into it to give me that. But I don't know yet. I don't know. So that, that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm trying to figure out. So I want to know from you guys, the audience, if you've ever built something like this, specifically for Micro Four Thirds, because the fact that he's shooting it on full frame on a Nikon might have something else to do with it as well. Don't know. But if you've ever built something like this and actually have gotten successful at hitting that infinite focus, I want to know because I love the look of it. I think it's a really cool, fun thing. And I just it, it just tickles me that you can build something like this out of vintage old parts and cheap adapters and so on. I think it's really really cool and fantastic. So um, that's a lot of fun. So Lucas in here in the comments is saying, flipping the front element alone will give you that look. It does lose most of its sharpness on the edges. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. That's very good to know as well. Um, John is agreeing with him. Um, and then saying, John saying, add a speed booster to get the, uh, if you add a speed booster that the swirly of the Helios would come back. Huh. So the Helios Again, I, like someone said, this is you can get the same look, and so I just went, okay, and I just bought it. I haven't actually looked into this very much. What is it about the Helios lens that gives it that swirl? I don't, I don't actually know. If you know, throw it in there. Um, so it's, I think it's a fascinating, fun thing to do. It's a fun experiment. I, I love that you can do this. I love that this is an option, and it does make for some clever, unique photography that is not perfect. And I think that's part of the beauty of it. I know for Jim, this is a big part of it. He likes the fact that you don't get perfect focus. It makes you as the photographer focus more on the 
no pun intended to focus, but to focus more on the light and the shapes, light patterns, light shadows, the shapes that you're shooting instead of just being all technical. And it has to be on a perfect focus. And he's told me that he's had arguments with purist photographers who are like, oh, it's not, it's not real photography because it's not a proper lens. You're not getting edge, edge sharpness. Please. It's art, my friends. It is art. You're creating art. He's creating beautiful art. And he's creating it with a unique lens. And the beauty of that is you can't just walk into B&H and buy this lens. You've got to build it. And I think that is... I think that's really, really cool. So anyway, so if you know, if you have an idea for the solution, please do stick it in the comments. We're going to go into a Q&A session here in just a moment, and I'm going to scroll through all the chats that, that's in here. Maybe there's some other ideas already have been thrown out. Um, if you do know and you're watching this, though, please do stick it in the comments. If you have built a lens like this or anything else, if you have taken multiple pieces to create your own custom lens to get a look that you love, Tell us about it. I would love, love, love to hear what you've make, made. Um, list out the parts as long as you're willing to share. It might be your little trade secret, and that's totally fine too. But tell us what you're willing to tell us about it. And then include a link to some photos somewhere. If you drop a link into the comments, uh, into the chat, it will get blocked. We will release it later as long as you're actually linking to photos. Uh, so go ahead and do that. It may take a while for your comment to show up, but we'll, we'll take care of that. But I would love to see other photos that you guys are doing with these custom funky lenses. I think that's super cool and fun to do. So that, my friends, is that. Oh, I, I promised to show you what this was. I posted a picture before I went on the trip to Detroit, and I kind of a top-down of all the gear that I was bringing. Some people were asking about this. This is, I really like this. I bought this a couple years ago. It is a double-headed rear lens cap, if you will. It's a little thick. I'm not quite sure why it has to be this big. Uh, let's just go to the close-up here. It's simply a rear lens cap on two sides. It actually has this swivel thing, so you could attach this to your belt or something and then uh, just easily swift flip it over to get to the lens that you want. But the idea is that you have, uh, you put one lens on one side, one lens on the other, and then find the dot for it. And then, um, like I said, you can attach it to a belt or your bag, or I just put it in my bag. And then when you want to swap out a lens, it's just one thing that you're dealing with. You take a lens off, put another one on. It's just it's just a cool thing. I I think it's loud and obnoxious. I think it's really cool. Um, so it's, well, sometimes I carry this thing. So this is this is the 50 to 200, and then the 12 to 60, and then the 8 to 18. So the trifecta of lenses. I know someone had asked about that as well. Um, pretty slick. I will be talking about this 50 to 200 soon. I don't know if it's going to be this Friday or it might be next week, but we are going to be talking about that lens because it's it's a beautiful lens. I've got some great shots out of it. Okay, enough babbling. Moving on to the Q&A.